Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, crazy woman mistakes me for an employee, assaults me, then claims I assaulted her when I defended myself. The second story, impudent woman ordered not to call her a ma'am and I obeyed. The third story, Chad screwed me over and ruined me financially. Almost exactly a year later, I ruined his life by making him homeless and probably getting him arrested. On to the first story. Call the police because a customer defended himself when you assaulted him? Of course. Short backstory. I'm suffering from social anxiety, and the key element to this story is, I hate when strangers touch me. I get really uncomfortable and freaked out by it. That and the fact that I did take a couple of self-defense classes a couple years ago, not too much, but enough to know how to strike a punch. So this story happens in the local go-to discount store. The dress code is a blue polo with the store's logo in a big yellow font on the back, and a small logo on the front. It really should not be hard to spot when someone's an employee. I was wearing a classic white shirt at the time, not remotely any hue of blue, and no bright yellow name tag on. Anyway, I was casually browsing the store putting stuff in a cart I was carrying with me. At some point I decide that I don't really want this random item, so naturally I go to put it back, because I'm a decent human being that doesn't leave stuff laying randomly. In comes Angry B, AB from here on, I'll be me. AB proceeds to first snap her fingers, and say something along the lines of, hey you, come over here. Like so many others on this post, I ignore her, thinking she isn't talking to me, because why would she? I'm obviously not an employee, Turns out AB didn't like this. At one point I walk away from her, toward the registers to pay for my goods. As I'm walking away, AB proceeds to walk up behind me, grab me by the shoulder, yell something the like of, how dare you blah blah blah, I'm a self-entitled B yada 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 you should not ignore me squee squee, and spin me around. As I mentioned, I'm a no touchy touchy guy. And I'm not saying what I did is necessarily okay, but I acted on pure instinct from what I learned in self-defense. Mid spin around I yell back off as loud as I can, a good tactic to use if you're being assaulted or harassed as it works as a deterrent factor for the assailant because you're not an easy target and it also draws people's attention thus giving you witnesses and proceeded to give a mixture of a shove and a punch. The result of the punch was AB falling flat on her A and proceeded to yell even more obscure things. Me, what the actual heck are you doing lady? AB, what the F, did you just punch a paying customer? I demand to talk to your manager right now. Me. What? I don't work here. WTF? AB. You filthy liar. You just assaulted me. I'll have you fired and arrested. Luckily a manager was actually in the same aisle as we were in. Why she didn't ask him is beyond me. He's wearing the name tag. And I guess he heard the shouting, cause he came rushing over. Manager. What's going on here? AB. Your SH employee just ignored me and then proceeded to assault me completely unprovoked. I demand that you fire him and call the police. Me, lady, I told you I don't work here. You assaulted me. Of course I'm gonna defend myself. Manager, this man doesn't work here. AB, of course he does. He was putting things back on the shelves. Manager, he still doesn't work here. Never has either as far as I know. AB, I still demand that you call the police. Now this is where the malicious compliance comes in. The manager gave me a knowing look and a smile. Turns out the store has CCTV cameras pointing just down this aisle. Manager, I'd be happy to call the police for you. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Me, look man, I really just want to buy my stuff and go home. AB, you're not going anywhere. You assaulted me. You're lucky I'm going to the police instead of beating the SH out of you. Mature, wow, who would have imagined? Long story short, the manager called the police and two nice gentlemen in uniforms were with us within 10 minutes asking what happened. AB proceeds to give the story about how I completely ignored her because she had a question and that I then proceeded to hit her and kick her. WTF, I shoved her out of the way and I tell my story where she keeps screaming about how I'm a filthy liar and she's a poor victim because she's a woman and all other sorts of crap. The manager tells us he can quickly pull up the footage from the CCTV and the police were more than eager to see it. About five minutes later, we're all standing in the back looking at the footage. Officer, well lady, it does look like you assaulted him, and he simply defended himself. I don't spot him either punching or kicking you. This results in arguing that would most likely be flagged for excessive foul language, 
and it's just one giant mess of a discussion between her and the officers. I guess it can be summarized that she had a re moment, and it ends with her lunging at one of the officers. Looks like she was going to slap him or something, and she was taken back to the station with them. Apparently, attempting to assault an officer isn't very popular with said officer. I have no clue what happened to her, but I was free to go, and I got a free coupon for approximately $35 for the store, which was more than the total I was buying for, so I was quite happy with that. I saw the manager a couple times in the store afterward. Apparently, the crazy woman's been banned from the store, but he hasn't heard anything new either. It was all one big cluster F of what the heck is going on. So, some people have been asking what happened to the lady, if I pressed charges or whatever. She did end up getting a sentence for trying to assault the officer. What it was, I don't know, but at least she got what was coming for her. The next story is, got written up at work for doing what the customer said. A bit of backstory. When I was 17, I got my first job at Six Flags, which won't say which one for security purposes. I got a position in the retail department, and I was stationed in the sports memorabilia shop. Basically, it sold sports jerseys, basketballs, footballs, toys, etc. Now, the way things were set up is that the sports shop is small, meaning there was only one employee stationed within the small shop, which is usually me and the other guy who does it, depending on which shift we were doing. Well, anyway, that means not only do I have to man the cash register, but I have to help customers get down any item high enough, check in the back for an item that wasn't on the main floor, meaning the shop is unattended, and I had to unlock our glass case, which kept our more expensive items if asked. Now, I know some people say it's all part of the job description, but try saying this to someone who when it's their first job and your shop got busy. Now, on to the story. I had recently turned 18, and I was a few months into my job, and I'm already hating it. One day during my evening shift, I was in the shop folding up some clothing before stocking it on the shelves, when a good amount of people came in. I think it was about 7 people. They were all looking all over the place, so I went up to them one by one to ask them if they needed help. As usual, they say no. A few minutes passed, and this woman, who I want to say is in her mid-30s, blonde hair tied into some kind of bun, and wearing sunglasses. She called me over because she needed me to get a jersey down from a high hook. I grabbed the tool used to reach it and brought it down. She started to look it over, and said she was interested in buying it. By now, a couple of the people were waiting by the register waiting to be checked out. I then asked the woman that I was going to take the jersey to the register for her, and she agreed. Now, I didn't want her to hold on to the jersey because we were right next to the exit doors, which were always open, so I didn't want to risk her trying to steal. This happened quite a lot. We didn't have those security devices that beeped when something's being stolen, so I had to keep an eye out. Anyway, when I get to the register, I started checking out the items. Coincidentally, one of my supervisors came in to check how things were, basically doing his rounds. The woman I helped earlier talked to him, and they came over to me. My supervisor, who we'll call Jose, told me that the woman complained that I ripped the jersey out of her hands and walked away from her. I was shocked, especially after she verbally agreed to me taking the jersey to the register. I was shocked at this, mainly since this is the first complaint I ever got. This is where the malicious compliance comes in. I told my side of the story, but the woman denied it. Jose then had to side with the customer, as there was no witnesses at all. And like every employee, you couldn't argue back at the customer, and had to suck it up and take the abuse that's thrown at you. She kept on saying things like, you shouldn't have done that, it was wrong of you, and the mother of all, that was effed up. All I could do is stand there and reply, sorry ma'am, yes ma'am, I understand ma'am. Right after that last comment, she glared at me, from what I could understand from behind those sunglasses, and told me in a cold, irritated voice, don't call me ma'am. I don't know what happened or why it happened, but then I replied, okay sir. The woman in Jose's face dropped completely, but I was more focused on the woman, her expression was one of disbelief and shock. It looked almost as if someone had insulted her child, if she had any. She then unleashed an explosive tirade, basically telling Jose I needed to be fired or something for basically insulting her. I can't remember what Jose said, but eventually he got her to calm down and leave. She got the jersey discounted, as I think this was her plan all along. Once I was on break and we were away from the public eye, Jose went off on me, basically asking me what the heck I was thinking insulting her. I just say I was doing as she was asked. Can't remember what happened after that, but I remember being written up for it, and that gave me points towards being fired. If you're an employee of Six Flags or were, then you know what I mean. I ended up quitting the job a few months later. Best decision of my life. That may have been the very first complaint and write-up I ever got, but it felt so good calling her that. And the last story is... Almost ruined me financially and used me? Let me ruin your life real quick. Quick background. Beginning of 2018, I had a flatmate. Let's call him Chad, because F Chad, for a few months. 
I was very vulnerable at that time and unwilling to deal with my depression. I tend to have people around me as much as possible so I wouldn't be alone. Being unemployed and with no social security money, I was eating away my savings one day at a time. When a former friend Chad came to me and offered to move in with me, covering part of my rent. I agreed but he never paid, as he refused to get a job and I didn't have the strength to deal with it, so I just rolled with it instead. He even borrowed my car once, crashing it into a wall, costing me about 1200 euros to repair my car and taking it on my insurance to pay for the 4800 euros wall because he told me afterwards that he didn't even have a license. Around February, Chad found a girlfriend, Mary, and alternated between our apartments ultimately, eating out of her pocket and coming to me to use my Netflix 50k internet. On March, I finally moved out and went to Kenya for three months to try and sort my life out. All the additional electricity and water he used left me paying 600 euros on top of my normal service bill of 150 euros, and that in only three months. We lost contact afterwards because he got mad at me, thinking I had an affair with his girlfriend. I didn't, and me pushing him to get a job and pay back what he owes me. I have a credit contract for the 1200 euros of the car repair. He had to go to a mental health clinic because of his paranoia and bipolar disorder while I was gone and was set on medication, Seroquel and Quietapine, that stabilized him and made it possible to talk to him normally. Fast forward to now. I've sorted my life and currently work as a social volunteer in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Last night I received a message from his girlfriend. She told me that he actually started working as a farmer because the working agency in Germany forced him to and he wanted to keep working there, but he would have to move to a different town nearby to get the necessary training. He was done with her as she had nothing left to give him. He always charms people to use them until they're completely burned out. So he left her but still sleeping on her couch and commanding her around in front of her five-year-old son. She's broken and lets him proceed. On the other hand, I found out he robbed me multiple times. Mary just shot me a text letting me know that my old Ouya, my Dreamcast, a lot of my tools, my soldering iron, my Wi-Fi router, and my 80 euro studio microphone with extras 120 euros were buried between his things. I thought I just couldn't find them because they were buried between all my stuff in my grandparents' basement where I put everything I had in my apartment that I didn't sell. So I was texting with her a little. We always got along well, even though we talked very little. I got her mood up again and then began my revenge. I asked her if he was taking his pills as he was showing his paranoid behavior again. Sure as heck, he didn't. I asked her if he's on the lease of the apartment. He isn't. Does he have a key? Yes, well, not anymore. I told her to take it off while he was sleeping. I told her to bring her son to her parents today so he doesn't have to see it. He went to work this morning not noticing his missing key. When he comes home, she'll inform the police that he has mental disorders that make him unpredictable and potentially dangerous. Also, he has multiple warrants out for refusing to pay fines. He's in a lot of debt. The police will make sure he grabs his personal belongings and leaves peacefully, as well as giving him a temporary restraining order so she has time to get a real one from court. If he contacts her or comes to her house anyways, he's officially breaking the law and will be taken into custody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.